Okay, so this is, this is a big one here. And um, okay, now, three kids. Abraham's got three kids. We'll just do these quickly. Eliezer of Damascus, um, what's Abraham's problem? Sarah is barren and can't have any kids. So let me just kind of narrate the story. So Abraham comes to God and says, God, you say you're going to bless me with this land, seed, and blessing. I haven't got any kids, God. This is doing me no good. And he says, moreover, he says, I don't have any kids, and, who, and Eliezer of Damascus, my servant, is going to get all the, all the inheritance is going to go to Eliezer of Damascus. So this is the first one of Abraham's kids. Eliezer of Damascus, his servant, is going to receive the inheritance. And by the way, was that legitimate? And the answer is yes, we know that from Hammurabi's code and some of these other ancient law codes, that if a person died and had no children, who got their goods? The servant got the goods. So this was following the laws, the ancient laws, that Eliezer of Damascus would get his stuff. And God comes to him and says, no, it won't be Eliezer. It will be somebody from your own flesh. So it won't be Eliezer. But this is the first one that Abram thought that he would have his servant. So then what happens? With, with Hagar, and this is actually a really important text in Genesis chapter 16. Hagar, let me just narrate the story. Hagar is Abraham's handmaid and his servant. Who sets Abraham up? Sarah. Does Sarah say to Abraham, I can't have kids, go into Hagar and conceive with her, and that child then will be a, basically my child, and therefore we'll give the inheritance to that. It'll be our child. Now, that is exactly like the laws of Hammurabi. They're, they're following the laws, the customs of their day. Now, this is a big issue. We have to get out of our culture, okay? Did the Code of Hammurabi say that it was all right for a master to go into his maid and that wh whatever child was had then would be his adopted child, basically? Yes, it was allowed in the laws of Hammurabi. Now you say, wow, what is this? I mean, Abraham's cheating on Sarah. Question, is Abraham cheating on Sarah? Did Sarah see it that way? Did Abraham see it that way? No. I think what you've got to do is take this out of, as one fellow in the last class said, he says, Abraham's having sex with this other woman. Question, is that the American way of thinking about it? That's you guys' way of thinking about it. Did Abraham think about it like that? Abraham's having sex and cheating on his wife. No. They're thinking about it like this. Question, my wife and I can't have kids. That's not true, we have four. But if we couldn't have kids, is it possible they could take part of me, part of my wife, put it together in a test tube and find a woman who we pay ten to twenty thousand dollars and they put it in this other woman and she the surrogate mother has a child that's what's going on here does Abraham can Abraham go to his doctor and you know put the parts in the test tube and put it in another woman Abraham can't do it does he have to do it natural the natural way and so what it, basically what you got is you've got to put it in the context of a surrogate wife this is not this is not cheating on his wife. His wife set this up. This, she's a surrogate wife. Now, by the way, even in modern times, when a, a test tube baby is put in another woman and she bears that child, do you remember that case in New Jersey? The woman bears the child. Does the woman who bear the child wants to keep the child? Do you remember that? The woman who bore the child was attached to the child and she didn't want to give it back to the, the husband and wife. Okay, so question, does this cause problems even in modern American terms with test tubes and babies? It still causes problems. Question, was there a problem then after Sarah gave Hagar into her husband's lap and stuff? Question, is there jealousy between Hagar and Sarah? Yes. Did it work back then or were there problems associated with this? Now question, does this mean that God approves of this? Or was this what they did in that culture? Are there stuff recorded in the Bible that's not necessary in saying this is true for all time. There was part of that culture that is not meant to be universalized. Okay, so you've got to separate cultural norms from moral universals. You've got to separate those two. And by the way, by the way, does God cover for Ishmael and Hagar? Does God protect them? Yeah, God takes care of them even after Sarah kicks her out and things, and they go in the desert and stuff. So this is this is a pretty big thing here. And then finally, you get this. Isaac is a son of promise, born to ha uh, Sarah and Abraham when they're in their very old now. We're talking 100 years and that kind of stuff. And Isaac's name means what? Yitzhak. Yitzhak means laughter. Sarah laughed. Did Abraham also laugh? He also laughed. And so his name is Yitzhak, laughter, Isaac. And this is the son of the promise then, the one of the son of the promise and stuff. 
we'll call it quits there, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday.